All right, at 5.05, I am going to call our special board of finance uh, to order. The first item on the agenda is the agenda. Is there a motion? Thank you. Is there a second? Great. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. And the motion is unanimously adopted. Um, is there anyone here to speak to public forum? Must be two that are joining as attendees. They are, and they are both staff members. So seeing no one, I am going to close the public forum and welcome the mayor. Um, and we are ready for item 3.1, Mayor. So um, Jeff and Chapin, if you wanna come up and talk to us a little bit about authorization of parking revenue financing. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jeff Padgett, the Director of Parking Traffic, and we're here tonight seeking for Finance Council approval um, to enter into a $750,000 bond to pay for repairs at the downtown garage and the marketplace garage. Um, these were critical repairs, um, replaced the stair, well, massively, significantly repaired a stair tower in the downtown garage that was actually closed and uh, repairs made to the marketplace garage are intended to give us another three to five years of planning time so we can start to think about the next vision of what might be at this garage location because that facility is 50 years old. Um, this a very similar memo and actual request went to Public Works Commission last week and we got their approval to enter into this bond. Uh, I think that's the way to talk. Anybody's got questions about the specifics of the terms and points? So, five year bond. Thank you. I just have a question. You had said that the, the um, mentioned that the marketplace needed marketplace that three to five years, maybe three to five years that it would be, what did you just say? Marketplace garage is at its end of useful life. Right. And we don't have a plan yet to do something else in application. So we time, we bought ourselves three to five years of planning time so that five years of useful life in the background. But the engineers indicated yes, these repairs by us that time. All right, and then the, that's the marketplace. What about right. the downtown? The downtown garage, the stairs were um, rusting out. They were about to you know, fall down and had them closed. So it's a safety issue. The only Half of that garage is much newer, and so it does have the same structural concerns as the marketplace and the other. College Street has received recently a much more comprehensive repair. So the future of that garage, both halves of it, I think, are uh, more secure than uh, than future. I guess the only concern that I have is that usually you bond beyond the life of what you need, and you know. Maybe five years, you're not going to start doing this until year three. So that's a, um, and I wonder is the reason why you're doing that because you don't have the funds for year one and two? We're still in recovery mode of COVID. So, I mean, I think that's, you know, the germane issue is to, you know, obviously you're planning for years that are far into the future. So I'm assuming that you have a plan or there is something else that's being retired or something that would, I don't know, Catherine, that would give you the resource to believe that 250,000 for three years is not gonna be a heavy lift. So President Paul, if you see at the end of the memo. Did I miss uh, something? I'm sorry. You have really something, but it, it is in there. And I think it's 
it goes to your question, which is that um, you know, the, uh, I've asked Jeff and Chapin to come back and present the board in the next three to six months with a uh, basically a plan to uh, ensure that they that that this is a plan to ensure that they will be able to pay it off of the schedule. This is an area where, to some degree, we control the uh, the um, future revenues through policy decisions that we make. And it's been many, it's been quite a few years now since there have been really adjustments to policy or rates that um, could generate additional revenues. There's no reluctance to do that for, I think, you know, good reason during the during the pandemic and immediate years after. Um, we probably you know, we may well um, uh, need to make some decisions in the future, such as you know something that has been out there for years that we've been hesitated from doing it. We don't charge anything in the garages on Sundays. That's a kind of policy that may need to be reevaluated if the uh, revenues don't recover kind of organically on their own. Um, and there are other other decisions like that that uh, are within our control. So this gives us five years to. Um, uh, to figure this out, and I've asked for a written report that we would present to you and get approval on three to six months from then. Okay, so I actually read the payments and didn't read the last paragraph. So mm -hmm. um, that was in there. I obviously you covered that. I mean, it, you know, it's not a, it's not the, it's not the ideal situation. I mean, I think we should all be honest about that. This yeah. is not the ideal situation, yeah. um, but. Um, uh, you know, and of course, the other thing I wonder is, I mean, is it possible, um, you know, the rate 375, um, I don't know, it just seems, I mean, I understand that uh, that was the bond council, you know, that was the, the recommendation. I wonder if there aren't, I don't know. I don't know if there are other, there isn't another solution to this. And I don't, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I don't know if it's part of it ourselves or if there's some other way that we could do that. Um, and maybe us, I don't know, but it does, um, it's, it's not the ideal situation. I mean, I'll support it, but I, it does sort of, I think it's unfortunate, but three to five months and three to six months, we'll look forward with great anticipation to the, the ideas are the good. Right. Should I agree with us? Okay. I can't wait. Me too. <laughs> um, thanks, President Paul. I, I understand your uh, perspective and, and um, largely, you know, and uh, it, I think it's worth, um, this is probably the area of the city's finances that were hit most heavily and permanently by, by the pandemic. We just haven't seen, uh, whereas you know, all, all the other revenue streams have largely recovered from parking. You know, it's probably the flip side of the good news we were reporting last week that people are driving less and that emissions are down. Um, certainly, the, uh, people are coming into work less. That's one of the major revenue drivers of, of, of the garage. So this is an area where, you know, we've really been de dealing with um, both uh, many, you know, a long list of deferred maintenance to address as well as, you um, Kind of these large, larger economic forces. Uh, I agree with you um, that uh, it, I think it's really important that, that we follow up and make good on what, what is said here. That this there needs to be a plan that comes back early in this in this loan, um, so that uh, we definitely have a way forward. I think it's a it's a manageable. I'm confident this is a manageable number we can work our way through unless we like forget about it, neglect it. And this I'm glad we're having this conversation too. <laughs> Make sure we're all on the same page. This needs to come back for uh, some, some tough decisions potentially. Or, I'm not wildly dramatize it, but if we, we got to make sure we don't kick the can down the road here and ignore this. We, we may need to make some changes. Uh, and for that, so, uh, Councilor, Councilor Barlow. Sorry, did you want to get back to that? Councilor Barlow? Um, yeah, I just had a question about 
um, so the mechanics of the repayment. So there's no payment, not even interest payments in year one and two. There is interest payment. There are interest payments here. There's interest payment on year one and two, and then plus and then two fifty plus. Okay, got it. Yeah. So well, that says oh, that's so not there. Yeah. Okay. So it's moving fast. Last okay. Week, so okay. I was just wondering if the, the, the interest was getting you know, so that's put into the last three years. Okay. Yes. I understand. Sorry. Well, if I can, can we update that on the, yeah, on the yeah. can we make a note in the, we should update the document. So, this documentation looks like there's no payments here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, there's interest payments, interest one and two, and then there's one interest in three, four, five. Very good. And there's also, there was also, I got a last minute edit. There's a question. Yeah, that I submitted also, so I don't know. Okay. It, yeah, that edit was grammatical. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Okay. Let's. So maybe if we take action on this shortly, can we work with or in terms? Yeah, you get it cleared up. Yeah. Terms posted. Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, any further discussion or questions? Are we ready for a um, on this meeting? I will move the uh, recommended action on the Thank you, Councilor Barlow. You're a second. I'm happy to say. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, um, let's go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Um, thank, thank you. Yeah. If you can, we look forward to being back with you to work through the uh, pro forma and uh, assumptions that uh, we have to return these two funds to health. Great. And you'll be able to do that next The revised memo. Yes, we will work with DTL to get that up immediately. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, we have two more items on this special board finance meeting. Um, item number two is the annual appropriation and budget for fiscal year in July 1st, 2023, and I believe June 30, 2024. Um, and then we will talk about the kind of companion uh, resolution, which is the tax assessments. Um, how would the, the board like to proceed? We do, we have a PowerPoint that um, Catherine has prepared for the full council discussion. It's, it's, it's um, I think, entirely made up of information that's been shared in prior present PowerPoint presentations with, with the board, so we could um, we could go through that, uh, or um, I, maybe be more efficient to go straight to any comments or questions that the board would like to make. We will be making a full presentation at the at, at the council since the body hasn't hasn't seen everything all at once. So, um, how what would this what would the board like us to proceed here? Well, I mean, I personally am going to see the we're going to see the presentation, and it's effectively unchanged from the one that was on the twelfth. Is that about right? On the twelfth of June, the one that said that. I mean, I wasn't here for that board of finance meeting, but I did look back at the. It is a combination of that one and one from the first of June to kind of get everyone up to speed. The idea is that. The three of you and Councillor Jang have been along for this journey and the other councillors maybe not. So to provide like a full overview of kind of where we've been up to now. But it is all, I just took slides from everything you've already seen. I just put them into one new slide deck, but I did not create new content. 
Oh, that's the case. I mean, personally, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't need to see it again unless other people have to travel too. I wasn't planning to pour <laughs> through that, but I certainly can. <laughs> Okay, then, um, so let's, uh, my hope, um, although uh, I think maybe, maybe, yeah, quite remember, you know, this is the, the 12th budget that I've been responsible for. I, I the great majority of others, the Board of Finance has taken action, uh, making a recommendation on the budget uh, one way or another before the council voted. I think, I think they're happening one or two times, one for whatever reason, the board chose not to do that. So it's not an absolute requirement, but the idea that we, as we discussed on the 12th was that we would attempt to do that and convene this meeting ahead of time. So, um, uh, it would certainly, I think, um, yeah, that, that's the purpose of us really gathering. And um, uh, I would welcome, um, you know, if you want to bring that book to that effect on, on the floor, or I think that's one thing that we could do now, or we could have further discussion if you have board members from the program. Well, I have, I, I, I don't need to make a motion. I can certainly make a comment if that would be helpful. Great. I, um, you know, so I have, as probably everyone knows, and certainly anyone on Facebook knows, I did have a period of time where I was not as, as I typically engaged in the, in the process as I usually am. Um, due to circumstances beyond my control, good circumstances, but nevertheless, a little bit more challenging. Um, and certainly tried to keep tabs on what was going. I did not see, and there haven't been notes, there haven't been minutes that I've seen posted for the July and um, the June 12th Board of Finance meeting. I basically went off the conversations that I had with people about that meeting, and then also the PowerPoint, which um, was pretty much unchanged. I mean, maybe there were a few missing, but I mean, I think it was mostly the same. Um, I guess the the only thing that I will say is that um, I, I don't think I've ever, all the years that I've served on the city council, I don't think I've ever um, interacted with a city councilor who wants to vote no on a budget because it's a, it's a huge document. It's the most important thing that we do all year and because it sets the priorities for the coming year. And I, you know, I, I never give up hope that there is an opportunity to find a middle ground, um, you know, collaboration, compromise. I'm not saying that I, I lay no fault in with any one person, any two people. I take responsibility for it myself. Um, I think that there still are opportunities um, just within the normal fluidity of an entity the size that there is $290,000 that over the course of this year would present itself in such a way that effectively no public no public safety no non no non union no current non union positions are affected all of the principles that I believe you would put out in the narrative could still be honored and still have a way to have a, a meeting of the mind. So the streets, the streets get done in the way that we want them to get done. And 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 people feel that um, you know taxes have not that we have done the, the absolute even further best best we can do. We've already done the best we can do. Now we're talking about the best best. And I think, you know, I, I, because it's, because they're, you know, they're line items in a budget, it's hard to really go line by line. And I feel like doing that in a, in a public setting probably isn't fair because some of them are either vacant positions, positions that soon become vacant, that really are not appropriate to talk about publicly. So I don't really want to go into all the nuances. I'll give you one example and then maybe that would lead to some sort of a discussion. Um, so Catherine, you know, I asked you about line 7850. 7850 for those who are not as well versed in line 7850, and I, I want anyone to raise their hand if they know what line 7850 <laughs> yeah. is. Okay. 
All right, do you know what line 7850 is? All right, well, now we're all going to know. So line 7850 is contingency. And line 7850 in FY20 and FY19 was around $3,000 that was spent. Last year, it was budgeted for $100,000. This year, this year, right now, as we live and breathe, 20, FY23, according to Catherine, 22,000 of that has been spent. So 100,000, 22,000. Now, of course, the word contingency means contingency. That means if we already know that it's gonna happen, it's somewhere else. If we don't know it's gonna happen, well, we don't know it's gonna happen. So we certainly have to plan for that. This year's line item contingency is 175,000, which begs the question, if it was 100,000 last year, and we've gone through an entire year, we've gone through three years of incredibly difficult and challenging pandemic uncertainties, is it possible that the 175 could at least be level funded for this year. I haven't asked you that question. I apologize. For, I don't mean to put you on the spot. And I'm not saying that 175 is realistic. But let's just try to see if maybe 175 could be 100. Well, you get a little bit closer and a little bit closer. There is, There are, again, I can't really go into all the little nuances. I, I started calculating it myself and even based on one month, I think there are opportunities to at least go half of that of the 290. But that's me as someone who doesn't know all of the intricacies of every little line item, of every little department, of every big department. Um, I, can't, I can't pinpoint all of that. What I can say is that in the past, there have been times where we have done budgets where we have either put placeholders in, knowing that over the course of a, of a year, there will be other opportunities in an $80 million budget to find those little smaller amounts. Um, or when there are things that we've really wanted to do, we have said, we, we will revisit this in six months and we will find some of those efficiencies, vacancies, attrition, whatever they may be. So I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, I would, I would, I think that it is tremendously powerful and sets a wonderful tone for the coming year. If we as a as a body are able to find a way to honor all of the priorities that are important for the administration and all the priorities that are important for those who must vote on the budget. And that's where I will leave it. I, you know, we don't usually we don't usually legislate in this way. Probably if I had been here on the 12th of June, I probably would be saying this now and not saying this then and not now. As I say, I know there's only a couple of hours here, but I still feel that we should at least have that opportunity. And I would just ask you if you think, if you think that there is that opportunity. Um, in a way that we could find a meeting of the minds. So that's those are my comments. I won't be saying anything at the board at the council meeting. I'm saying it now. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Great. Thank you, President Paul. I, I certainly understand. Um, sorry, do we raise a hand, Councilor? Uh, if you want to respond to that, I can speak. Uh, sure. Why don't you go ahead and, and you can comment first, and I'll respond to this. Sure. Always appreciate Paul trying to find a way for us to uh, come to a compromise and be able to vote yes. Um, and you know, sometimes we're just not going to get there. And I have a hard time seeing us getting there in the two hours we have when we're likely to vote on the budget. Uh, finding a solution that we couldn't find in the last eight weeks of these conversations. Um, and I would have a hard time trusting that whatever we found to try to come up with that uh, additional money without raising taxes, uh, I would have a hard time making that decision without knowing the full impasse of um, deciding where they put them from. 
Uh, and so, while I appreciate that effort, I think, at least from my perspective, as the counselor uh, planning to vote no tonight, um, that us having that conversation between now and 5.45 or 6.30, whenever we're discussing the budget of the full council, uh, I would feel comfortable making that decision, changing my vote between now and then. So, um, I, I was going to save my longer comments for the full council, and I think I still will. Um, so, I guess I will just leave it there for now. Okay, Council Mickey, um, and President Paul, thank you for, for those comments. Um, I, um, I appreciate where you're both coming from with those comments. I, um, I something I will repeat when we're upstairs. I, I um, in many ways, think this of the 12 budgets I've been responsible for um, uh, was the most difficult. Uh, we have um been grappling with some just a, a host of uh, difficult um forces uh, and issues many of which are sort of beyond our direct control uh, we for a second year in a row are, are facing historic inflation we have continued volatility and some we've just been discussing some shortfalls related to disruptions of the pandemic. Um, we made some big changes to our programs and our efforts to at a local level address equity issues in prior budgets. Um, and we took on the challenge of phasing that out over three years and we're in the third year of that phase out of the last year that there is some federal support for those we have kept those equity commitments high um and but the federal support for them is going away as we knew it would and that had to be absorbed and digested in this budget um and we're also trying to be sensitive to our um constituents who uh, face rising costs in, in pretty much all aspects of their life. And we don't want to undo, make city government a, a new, uh, additional burden. So with all those constraints, this has been a very tough budget to complete. Uh, I'm, um, uh, I think we can, um, I think there's a lot to President Paul, your point. I think there is a lot to be um, proud of and excited about in this budget, despite all that, this continues to advance the city, advance the community in numerous important ways. Um, it continues our efforts to rebuild and really retool the police department and improve and change the way we deliver public safety. It continues our major commitment to improving our infrastructure. It, continues our um, commitment to those equity commitments I was just talking about, including uh, fully funded and reorganized REIB department. It, um, for the first time, has nearly $200,000 in it for um, opioid-related uh, um, uh, interventions to, uh, it's the first time we're able to, you know, here's a play, so we're able to use uh, new revenues that are coming to us from the opioid settlements and deliver progress, you know, and more. So um, I to, to 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 get to deliver all that while also um, overcoming these challenges, we we have had to um, push very hard in areas and really push up to the edge of what I am I'm comfortable um, budgeting for. We are. Uh, ex uh, one of the complicated projections we do every year is around um, attrition and around sort of to your point, President Paul, the, what, what's going to what's going to happen in the normal course of business that's going to end up saving us money because positions are not refilled uh, as quickly because vacancies come up, um, and um, we have really pushed those assumptions. For example, to we, we doubled our attrition numbers in many departments uh, from what we have in the past. Um, that 
in the face of that and, and frankly knowing how challenging it has been to, to control personnel costs in since the pandemic because of our challenges competing in the workforce because of inflationary pressures we, um uh and i think we did explain this somewhere we, we did feel that it was prudent to bump back up the contingency number from 100,000 to 175,000 in contrast we have had some years that it's been as much as 500,000 it's been a long time. It's been a while since we've done that, but it, there, it's not. It's certainly not a historically large contingency number. I think it represents on a hundred million dollar budget. It is. Uh, it is. It is quite a small contingency. So, um, uh, I appreciate the sentiment that it, it, it is. So, a lot of the budgets over the last twelve years have been unanimous budgets, and um, we have worked hard for that. And um, I. Um, have, House Media did have some communications over the past week exploring whether uh, there was a way to come to a meeting in lines. Um, we haven't gotten there yet. I'm hearing you uh, and I respect your sense that it'd be tough to, to bridge that gap now. So um, I, um, that's my kind of reaction to the last two comments, I guess. And I, I guess I would hope that uh, with Councillor McGee's point, that maybe it would be possible. Well, are, are we in a position to make a recommendation um, on this uh, on this budget of this of this point as board? Well, given we we sort of know where everybody's at at this point, I, I would be happy to uh, recommend the action. Just make it uh, sort of to recommend the uh, recommend the budget resolution of this board. Thank you, Casparo. Oh, second. Thank you, President Paul. Um, would anyone like to make any further comment? That's me. I'll just say briefly before I don't know for the first time. <laughs> um, you know, I I recognize that we're in a challenging budget year, and I recognize that future budget years are going to be even more challenging. Um, we have local matches on a number of infrastructure projects that we still don't have a funding source for, that we have vehicles that we need replacing the, and a deferred list that's going to grow even longer in um, the coming years with the um, purchase moratorium. And that the cost of living increases that we negotiated part as part of the union contract will also add additional pressure to future budget years. And with all of those things, uh, with those being the predictable things that we see uh, coming at us in the future, I see a need to increase taxes uh, potentially next year, year after that. I think this year we were able to find a way to bridge the deficit that you all brought us. Um, at the beginning of the budget conversation to have a budget that met the needs that we we had you know, without cutting staff or services and i appreciate that very much um, but for us to ask for an additional amount beyond what was planned for this year in terms of uh, aiding and patching we all know the streets that are in dire need of improvement. I'm not aware of that. Uh, but to ask people for more this year, when we know you know, that we're going to be years in the future, we're going to maybe even have to ask for a larger tax increase. Uh, I just I can't support that this year. And I I think this is. Now is the most important time for us to be talking about more sustainable ways for us to fund city services going forward, because it's clear that you know, with the reappraisal, the property tax is not going to be a sustainable method for us to fund so many of the infrastructure improvements that we need, uh, maintaining essential city services that um, people have come to expect. We need to find a better way to do this. And uh, I hope that we can do that 
over the next year, over the next two years. And work with the legislature to do that. So I don't have to go to Montpelier to get any approval on these things. Changing the way the state has funded education and uh, uh, services for decades is not going to be an easy ask, but you know, I think it's imperative that we, we make those efforts. So uh, with that, I will not be supporting this today. Thank you for um, being so uh, transparent, uh, Councilor McGee, on, on your thinking. Um, uh, I do. Um, um, I want to make sure you know we have a number of counselors here. We've got the, the public watching. Um, I want to make sure that that it's. My understanding, I think you just articulated this, but we have lost your vote on this over the um, half a cent um, increase to the streets tax that is in the budget that is before you. Um, this um, it is true, was not, uh, you know, it's accurate that the, when we began at the beginning of May, our kind of draft budget that, um, that increase was not in the initial discussions. Um, I think this is an example of how that process is not intended to be just a kind of pro forma process. The idea is to engage you the board and uh, the public um, and full council um, in our thinking when it's still in draft form. And in this case, uh, after um, viewing the street work that was uh, going to get done in the coming year and understanding that we are below the voter approved caps for the street tax um, by um, uh, a couple of cents, I believe, um, we started discussing uh, in really in response to counselor feedback whether that there might be some, and, and really understanding that because of our constraints, the, the street patching budget was gonna be very limited this year. Um, that's when this uh, discussion of additional half cent, which what is the, for the average taxpayer, the, the just to, again, it's clear what we're talking about here. It is just over a dollar a month. Hang on, it's in this other PowerPoint. Okay, if Catherine gets that figure, yeah. I'll just finish the point. So this a um, dollar fifty-four a month. So that's and you know it's not gonna be the same for everybody. That's on a three hundred and seventy thousand dollar home because that's yes. the median or the average home. Median. The median home um uh for this most recent assessment. Um and you know what what's here's the difference at that uh that um half a cent is going to make is it's going to um, uh, the city uh, engineer Norm Baldwin is here. He has projected um, with the initial budget we were talking about there being a approximately $450,000 uh, deficit in our patching need citywide for the upcoming year. <laughs> and with this change, we'll still have a deficit have reduced that deficit by more than 50%. It'll be an under $200,000 deficit, and uh, that will allow us to get more patching done um, citywide, and we'll be on first arterials, and then uh, neighborhood streets is the kind of way that the patching is prioritized. To basically get that right. Um, arterial streets, uh, collector streets. And Got I missed one, that's right. So the, the biggest bang for the buck is the arterial streets. And obviously, there's a secondary review that relates to how bad of a condition the road is in terms of the volume of patches needed. So it's it's our best way of kind of spreading those funds to the specific targeted need, so that we have serviceable roads come springtime through the winter. I think that's our biggest concern. Obviously, our preferred choice would be to really fully repair and redevelop streets. But if we were to fix one street and then leave all those other streets kind of in a severe state of disrepair through the winter season, spring, so it makes sense to 
at least on a triage basis, deal with the patching and fix these kind of problem areas. But even with the half cent, we're not achieving problem selling all patching. But it is where we are, and that's what we're going to work with to make the best of the what is not really a great situation, but is reality we're living with. And I guess just to finish the point, I mean, from, from my perspective, um, it, well, it is accurate that there is some additional cost uh, in this budget if it's passed with that additional half cent in there. Um, the nature of the patching, the patching slows the deterioration of roads and it, it is an attempt to, is a preventive maintenance attempt that um, uh, has um, some benefit in sustaining the assets that we have and to reducing future costs. And so I think it's um, at least debatable whether um, this uh, eliminating this half cent um, increase would actually reduce um, uh, whether that's really a true savings or whether it's going to sort of be result in future costs. Um, although we don't, we don't, I think it's, it's it's tough to totally project that sitting here right now, but that, that's what the patching is intended for. That's uh, that's the way we will spend it. So, um, with that, there's no further comment. Um, I think we're ready for a vote on the motion. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carries three to one. Um, well, uh, we didn't combine these. So there is one more on the agenda, which is the, the tax resolution. Yeah. Or slide. It was a little funky that we uh, did these as separate actions, and then no. I'm quite. <laughs> no, what would happen if we pass one and not the other? Um, certainly, they 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 uh, they are companion bills, if you will. So um, I'm not sure that we need further discussion. Maybe we could have a motion on that as well. Sure, I'll move the uh, recommendation. Second. Thank you, President Paul. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Very right. opposed. Nope. Um, <laughs> 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 so you okay, well, uh, former <laughs> Board of Finance member, Councilor Hightower, do you count that in there? I don't think it's, a, it's just a three to one, uh, a three to one vote of budgets. Um, that completes our warrant agenda. Mayor, can you just ask a question? Um, yes, go ahead. Yes, sorry, I didn't um, it's more of a comment and a question uh, about where we're at over a year ago. Council and I worked with Council with put a resolution in asking the city to manage effectively an analysis of taxation, particularly property taxation, and how, among other things, how the homestead and the sensitivity related to the city of Burlington. We realized at the time of that resolution, it was complicated to get the information because we were in the middle of the appraisal. And so, who knows all the math was complicated. We're now this year at a point where that's sort of settled. We know that 70% of citizens get some sort of equalization and but we don't really have it drilled down and i really think it would behoove us to understand that i mean the, the cutoff is actually up to one hundred forty thousand dollars a year the the more major cutoff is up to ninety thousand people below ninety thousand get a pretty significant homestead credit and we need to understand how that matches up with the people growing here. Because it's based on people's income, there's a lot of issues with the tax department on, on how to get that analyzed. And I think that resolution asks the city to employ a consultant to do it. But I just strongly encourage it, particularly going into the session next year, going into a city budget year where we know we're going to have increases because of high school. We need to understand how that is, how good or not good that credit is. And I, I think it's better than we expect, but we don't know that. 
you know, we just don't know that. And I, I really encourage us to follow through on that analysis. Um, <clears throat> okay, thank you, Councilor Carpenter. And um, actually, it reminds me what um, in my long response to Councilor McGee, I meant to mention another thing that I think we should feel good about this budget is that uh, it recognizes that we do have major challenges coming in future years, uh, both because of the trends that we that I talked about previously and uh, additional trends like uh, the cost of the new high school and the impact that has on our um, uh, bonding capacity and um, and other pressures. And so in this budget, we are funding a number of studies that will uh, that will that will look at operating efficiencies. That will look at um, uh, our fleet. Uh, that will look at how alternative ways of funding uh, some of the activities with CEDO and a HUD funded effort um, and more. This combines with some ongoing studies that are underway. So um, something you know, anyone who's just tuning in now, something we've talked about repeatedly at this board is that over the first uh, we we're. We, we are going to push for the, bring those studies back as quickly as possible so that over the first six months of the coming year, we are really looking to the future challenges and um, being in a strong position for, for those future budgets. And certainly we can um, make sure, Councilor Carpenter, that we have the best data we have about who gets those homestead exemptions uh, as, as part of that. Because I think I, I don't know about you, the math of that program was like a black box, but um, sure. um, but property value caps and income caps and you know those if there's things that could be fixed um uh, we need to know that great and we do you know have this one of those studies that was referencing this in the field that i think is adjacent to what you're saying is this uh, property tax equity study that um, uh, is uh, going to have a lot of really information, interesting information along these lines as well. So uh, thank you everyone for your patience with that sort of uh, extracurricular discussion here. Um, now, seeing no objection, uh, the business being done, I will adjourn the Board of Finance at six, uh, sorry, five, what time? 5.52. Five five <laughs> thank you. We'll see everybody upstairs. <laughs>